That may be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh, there are some great buy low candidates at the running back position this week. Cannot talk about some of these guys. We're going to wait until the end of the video to talk about one guy that I think we need to be going and trying to send an offer for in every single league. Of course, before we get into the players themselves, you know exactly what I have to do. I have to go to the last video that we have and we have to pick some people to win a fantasy flock network hat i mean y'all can see it's a little dirty it, it just fell down but anyway let's go through we have hundreds of these hats that we are giving away we are giving away multiple hats every single video just make sure you go down there drop a like on the video subscribe to the channel leave a comment and you get entered in to win a fantasy flock network hat now our first comment is going to be coming out from I am going to apologize. I most likely cannot pronounce this name without butchering it. You will see it on the live stream. And then our next comment is going to be coming out from Alan. And yeah, y'all two win Fantasy Flock Network Cats this week. Make sure you go through, send me that email ASAP with your physical address so I can get those hats out to you. And I have a big ask for all of y'all right now. My birthday's on Sunday. If y'all enjoy us making multiple videos every single day, if you enjoy us live streaming every single night at the same time, you want to support this channel. Let's get to 10,000 underdog signups with promo code flock. Now they agreed that if we get to 10,000 signups with promo code flock, that they will fly people down to go to a Tampa Bay Buccaneers game with me, as well as to go to the Florida flock meetup. And they'll be doing that as a giveaway for people who sign up for underdog fantasy on underdog fantasy. They do fantasy drafts every year, including right now. They do player props every week that we have crushed every single week so far this season. When you make a $10 deposit with promo code flock, you support this channel more than you would ever believe. And at the same time, you get additional daily entries every single day to win a fantasy flock network hat. And on top of this, I mean, come on, you get a max deposit bonus. So make sure you go take advantage of that ASAP. They agreed to flying people out because they didn't think we could do it. Let's show them we can. Let's show them how strong the flock is. And let's dive into these buy low candidates, starting it off with DeAndre Swift here. With DeAndre Swift, my God, this is the easiest buy low candidate we have had. And I hate to sound like an ass, but this is our exact plan. This fell into our laps. I mean, what did we say last week? Last week, we said the plan was going to be to go through and lower your expectation for DeAndre Swift against a tough Chicago Bears defense. And I will admit, I thought this defense was going to take a step back coming into 2021. But based on what we have seen from this defensive unit so far, I mean, I think in 2021, there's still a great defense. We identified this as a spot. If you looked at our running back rankings a week ago, so many people were upset with me, screaming at me, Mason, how the hell are you going to have DeAndre Swift? down as low as you have them. How are guys like Jonathan Taylor up there and DeAndre Swift isn't? And I was saying, trust me, I love DeAndre Swift. I mean, we know that coming into 2021, it seemed like every single YouTube channel was coming out talking about DeAndre Swift being a player that you had to avoid in fantasy drafts with the thought process that Jamal Williams was going to be splitting this backfield and this was going to be a horrendous offense. Now, us at the Fantasy Flock Network, however, we came out and... I mean, we said the exact opposite. We said that with DeAndre Swift here, he was going to have a great role on this offense and that he was seeing every single valuable touch. I know you're annoyed with me saying this. I know we have said this every day for like three months now, but with DeAndre Swift getting every target out of the backfield, getting the usage in the red zone, it doesn't matter if Jamal Williams is getting the carries between the 20s. We have done historical research. We have laid it out and showed y'all that the new age running back in the NFL, it's the guy that's going to get the valuable touches, not every single touch in the backfield. I mean, the days of going and getting Ezekiel Elliott, they're pretty much over now. I mean, what you need to be finding is you need to be finding those running backs that are going to get targeted heavily out of their backfield, and they're going to get usage in the red zone. Now with DeAndre Swift, we didn't necessarily love him this week because we weren't projecting a lot of red zone opportunities for any running back in this backfield. Now with Swift, he comes out in. He has the exact role that he had all season. He was the running back three coming into this week on the season based on his usage in the receiving game. And here, the same thing happens this week. He plays 52 out of 71 snaps. That is a fantastic mark for really any running back. But more importantly, he sees 33 routes run. DeAndre Swift is running a route on essentially every single Jared Goff dropback. And if he's going to be running that many routes in this offense... 
He is someone that has the highest floor of almost any running back in fantasy football. Now, I know if you're looking at just the raw numbers here, he had eight carries, five targets, not a great line for DeAndre Swift whatsoever. But what we really need to be looking at, the snaps were there, the routes run were there, and we know that that is what we are looking for with DeAndre Swift is those routes run. So yes, he only has 16 rushing yards this week. Yes, he only had four receptions for 33 receiving yards at the same time. Still, this is going to be a spot. I think there are better days on the horizon. I mean, if we go through, if we pull up this Lions schedule going forward, I mean, yes, it was a tough matchup against the Bears, but he's about to go up against the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings have let up a considerable amount of points to running back so far this season. After this, he has the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, two get right spots for DeAndre Swift. I think we need to be going through and aggressively targeting the players to sell for DeAndre Swift. They're clear. They're the guys that we knew were going to be intriguing sells after after their strong performances this week in Jonathan Taylor and Antonio Gibson. Keep in mind, Jonathan Taylor and Antonio Gibson. I'm not trying to sit here and act like some, some genius that we knew we should be avoiding them coming into drafts this season. It was the exact opposite. I loved going out there and targeting those players, but when we get new data points coming in, we have to make those adjustments, and those adjustments are being made when we see Jonathan Taylor playing in an offense that loses the best offensive lineman in the NFL to a high ankle sprain, placing him on the IO with Quentin Nelson and with Antonio Gibson. The reason I love drafting Antonio Gibson in the second round is with the thought process that he had the upside to go ahead and take away the receiving down usage from JD McKissick. Well, that's never happened at this point. I think when we're this far into the season, I have to just take that pipe dream that we had with Antonio Gibson throw it out the window, understand that DeAndre Swift is a much better running back that I think you could go through. And this is your chance to trade for him after a disappointing performance, a very easy buy low candidate for me. Now, be a little patient here. I'm going to go through some obvious buy low candidates with the next two guys. Then we could get some intriguing guys in here at the end. But let's talk about some obvious ones. Our next guy, Dalvin Cook. I mean, you don't really need me to come out and talk about why Dalvin Cook is such an intriguing buy low candidate. So yes, he comes in this week and I mean, I was horribly wrong. I came out and I said, if Dalvin Cook was active, it didn't matter. Yes, you were going to be going through and lowering your expectations just slightly, but there was no reason in going and talking about Dalvin Cook being someone that you couldn't start in fantasy. You were jamming him in regardless, because if he was active, we know that he's a bell cow running back that can see usage in every area of the football game. He comes out and he plays 33 out of 67 snaps. So, I mean, he's literally splitting this backfield almost 50-50 with Alexander Madison. He gets nine carries in this game, three targets out of the backfield. The efficiency, not really there. I mean, he has 34 rushing yards, two receptions, 10 receiving yards at the same time. Now, with Dalvin Cook, I think in most leagues, you're not going to be able to go through and trade for him because your opponent's going to be at least average in intelligence. I mean, we're not assuming that your league mates are going to be idiots. So they're going to look at it saying, I mean, hey, Johnny, leave me the hell alone. Of course, Dalvin Cook is staying on my team. We know that Dalvin Cook coming back from that injury was going to have a smaller role than what we should expect going forward. This is not a committee running back backfield by any means. But I know some of y'all are playing in leagues where maybe your league mates aren't as knowledgeable as you are in fantasy football. Maybe you can go through and you can take advantage of the idea that if anybody Anybody is coming out and thinking that Alexander Madison is all of a sudden going to be playing in a committee here with Dalvin Cook. If you can buy Dalvin Cook at 90% of his price because of that, oh my gosh, that's going to be one of the best trades you have this year. I don't want to sound like an Alexander Madison hater, and I honestly don't even feel like we have to be worried about this knowing that everybody watching this channel knows exactly how high I was on Alexander Madison. And any given week that Dalvin Cook was missing, we've been calling Alexander Madison a running back that had top 10 overall upside, even though people were trying to argue with me about that all offseason, even though people were trying to argue with me about that back in week three. So I'm not necessarily worried that y'all are going to think I'm some Alexander Madison hater here. It's more so based on the idea that Dalvin Cook is still that bell cow running back. There are Two running backs that I would rather have in fantasy football at this point over Dalvin Cook. Derrick Henry, I'd be fine if you go through and make the argument that you want him over Dalvin. And also, Christian McCaffrey. Because obviously, CMC, if you're on a team that's maybe 3-1, and 4-0, and, and you're just going, Mason, all I care about is the fantasy football playoffs at this point. There, sure, Christian McCaffrey. We know he's going to have a much higher median projection whenever he is fully healthy. Okay, so now let's go to our next running back. Going back to a very obvious answer here. 
Let's go with Alvin Kamara. Now here with Alvin Kamara, yes, another stud running back. I know I'm wasting your time talking about this, but I know we had a lot of people in the premiere for our video back on Sunday after his performance against the New York Giants. And they were initially panicking on Alvin Kamara, screaming, Mason, what, what happened to Kamara? Mason, do we sell Kamara? Ma Mason, are we going to be trading him away? I'm saying, oh, what exactly happened? I'm not going to lie. I did not watch this New Orleans Saints and New York Giants game. So it took me a little bit of time to kind of figure out why people were panicking on Alvin Kamara. And the reason that people are panicking on Kamara right now is the fact that he saw zero, zero targets in this game. Of course, that's concerning. Of course, you hate to see that a running back that you're excited about him based on his usage in the receiving game, that he is no, no longer getting that exact role that we have had since 2017. Yeah, it's concerning. Yeah, you can't have Alvin Kamara up there above Derrick Henry like we did coming into the season. And oh my gosh, I... I was making fun of people who were drafting Derrick Henry ahead of Alvin Kamara. I mean, I was laughing at them, laughing at them, laughing at them. And at this point, of course, I am just a stone cold donkey. But regardless, you're looking at Alvin Kamara here. And at the end of the day, he played 59 out of 68 snaps in this game. Alvin Kamara is playing more snaps than he's ever played before. He ran 20 routes in this game as well. So Jameis Winston, yeah, not throwing the ball very often. Nobody's going to be looking at this offense and getting that excited with how they're just severely handicapping Jameis Winston here. But still, Kamara running all the routes out of this backfield at the running back position. He saw 26 carries, 120 rushing yards. And what I really want to be looking at is, obviously, they cut Latavius Murray and they just have an injury where Tony Jones gets carted off. Now, at the time of this recording, I'm recording this on October 4th this morning, we really don't have clarification on what the injury is with Tony Jones. It didn't necessarily look great, however. So it looks like Alvin Kamara is going to continue to play a career high level in most likely snaps and he's also going to be getting a career high number and overall touches in his offense now you'll still have to lower your expectations from what we had in 2020 knowing that the targets aren't not necessarily going to be there going back to what we were talking about with DeAndre Swift we're not just chasing raw volume instead we're chasing valuable volume in the form of targets and usage in the red zone here we know Alvin Kamara definitely still has that usage in the red zone targets may have been down but they should go up with the amount of routes that he ran Okay, so now our next player, I am very, very, very hesitant to bring him up because I know if anybody just started watching this channel over the past two or three weeks, they're going to be looking at me like I'm an idiot. But if you've been watching this channel for two months, you know that he was our number one, number one running back avoid coming into this season. And based on the questions that we have had on Patreon, based on the questions that we have had in our live streams, in our premieres, I think that this could be a spot where he went from being my number one avoid, and yes, he's looked very bad as we expected, and that's why we are avoiding him in drafts, to now he can be an intriguing trade candidate only if you're getting him for completely free because I've been getting some questions saying, can we cut this guy? And I'm saying, hell no, you can't cut him. You're not starting him by any means, but he's still a depth piece at the running back position. Mike Davis. Now with Mike Davis, yes, I know he's not good. I've been trying to tell people this for a very long time now, but at the end of the day, he is still seeing volume in this Atlanta Falcons offense. Now, yes, Cordell Patterson is coming out here and he is crushing. Patterson is currently the running back two, the running back two in fantasy only behind Derrick Henry. We're not trying to overlook that, but at the same time with Mike Davis here, he's had a considerable amount of opportunity where I think he is 100% still worth the roster spot, even though I don't have him in any of my own leagues because it was laughable when people were taking him in the fifth round. However, this is a player that just played on 51 out of 76 snaps for the Atlanta Falcons offense. He had 31 routes run out of a possible number of 44. So yes, Cordell Patterson has all the usage here. I mean, all the production. Let, let me walk that back. But Mike Davis still getting a considerable amount of run. He had 13 carries in this game. He had two targets out of the backfield. Now, yes, it was a horrendous day. Yes, I mean, the efficiency was god-awful. And yes, you're going to expect that Cordell Patterson most likely is going to continue to expand his role in this offense as he looks like he is just light years better than Mike Davis. But a big thing is, 
is fantasy football is all about price. So I may have been screaming to avoid Mike Davis when he's going in the fourth, fifth round of fantasy drafts. And I may have been calling that the worst pick in fantasy, but still at the end of the day, if we can all of a sudden go through and just have Mike Davis for free with the last couple spots of our roster, this is still a running back that if you're in a pickle during your bye weeks, if you have an injury elsewhere, you could always throw him in to your running back two slot, even though it's very gross to say. Now, our next running back honestly had a pretty damn good day, but I still think that you can go through and buy him a little bit lower than I think his price should be, is going to be Chase Edmonds. Now, with Chase Edmonds, yes, this Arizona Cardinals offense looked disgusting. I mean, disgusting in a good way. They came out and they crushed the Los Angeles Rams. Obviously, the Rams having one of the more talented defense in the NFL. And Edmonds here played 52 out of 78 potential snaps for the Arizona Cardinals. He ran a route on 30 snaps this week. He had 12 carries, but more importantly, five targets out of the backfield. And knowing that he is playing in the Arizona Cardinals offense, A, we know Chase Edmonds is going to see the efficiency based on the offensive loan. And B, Chase Edmonds is a damn good running back. I mean, we've seen the historical efficiency throughout his career be at a higher level than expectation. So I naturally assume that from a fantasy touch standpoint that, I mean, he is going to be scoring more fantasy points per touch than the average running back. He sees 120 rushing yards in this game, four receptions, 19 receiving yards. Now, the reason I'm including him here is I think a lot of people are looking at James Conner, who comes away with the majority of the fantasy points. James Conner comes out and he sees two rushing touchdowns in back-to-back weeks in this game. This is what we talked about coming into the year, that James Conner is a running back that's going to get that goal line level usage, but doesn't necessarily want to deter us that much away from Chase Edmonds, as that we know with this offense, I mean, Kyler Murray is still going to be vulturing a considerable amount of touchdowns down there at the goal line. So while yes, Connor still has that goal line level usage, and yes, he did see 18 carries in this game. He only played in 33 out of 78 snaps. He only had two targets out of this backfield. I think Chase Edmonds still had the exact role that you drafted him for. I think you should be very excited about the Arizona Cardinals overall offense, and that should include Chase Edmonds. Now our last running back, I mean, he had a lot of buzz, and I was someone putting out some buzz just a couple weeks ago. But it's died down a little bit, and now I think you can buy low. Javante Williams. Now, here with Javante Williams, I have not included him on a buy low running back list so far this season. A main reason is, is because obviously, I mean, you can't really buy Javante Williams low when everybody who has Javante Williams was just so excited, including myself a few weeks ago, about the prospect of Javante Williams taking that starting job away from Melvin Gordon. Trust me, I was right there with you. I wanted to assume it was going to happen actually earlier than it probably is. But now at this point, I mean, I think this is about the time where people who have Javante Williams, they may be getting Javante Williams fatigue here. They may be going, okay, well, I thought it was already going to happen. I guess if it hasn't happened by now, then I guess Melvin Gordon's going to be the starting running back until the rest of the season. That's not how you should be viewing it. Personally, I'm viewing it saying when you draft Javante Williams, like we have always said, this is a running back that you draft for weeks eight through 16. This is a running back that you draft for the second half in the season. And I was impressed that he was able to come out and he was able to get half of the snaps starting in week one here. He still had half the snaps this past week where he had 31 out of potential 61 snaps. What I also really like to see is he's getting usage in the receiving game. We know this was a great receiving running back coming out of UNC at the same time. He comes out, gets seven carries out of the backfield, which of course is not great. He has three targets out of the backfield as well. So Javante Williams has his value currently going down in fantasy from the excitement level that people had for him beforehand. But if anything, I think we should be more excited that we are one week closer to Javante Williams, most likely taking this starting job from Melvin Gordon. If you look historically at the team level investment that they put into Javante Williams and what that most likely means from the leash that Melvin Gordon has, I'd imagine that Javante probably going to be splitting this backfield and not be startable for you for the next three, four weeks. But after that, I could easily see him being the three down running back in Denver. He's looked great so far. He just had 48 rushing yards on only seven rushing attempts. I I think that we definitely want to go through and just kind of send out some feeler offers for Javante Williams at the moment. Now, thank you again for supporting the channel. Of course, go down there, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with any question you may have. And of course, when you do that, you get entered in to win a Fantasy Flock Network at my birthday's on Sunday, so please go through, sign up for Underdog Fantasy, promo code FLOCK, go check out some 
player props. Go check out what you're going to get with some drafts that you can get in. Find that in the description of the video. Find it in the comment section. Use promo code FLOCK to get the max deposit bonus, daily additional entries to win a fantasy FLOCK network hat. The chance to get in a giveaway to come down to Tampa, Florida with me to go to a Tampa Bay Buccaneers game and the Florida FLOCK meetup. And yeah, that's all I got for y'all. Have a great day.